Welcome friends to the video. I hope you are doing really well today. And in today's video, we're going to talk about the number one thing which is stopping you from recovering, why that is and uh, what you can do about it. And so if you are new to the channel, then welcome. My name is Dan and I do help people overcome their DPDR and their anxiety to get symptom free and to live their life as normal. And for those of you who are subscribers, welcome back. So I'm gonna to cut to the chase with this straight away. The number one thing which is stopping you from recovering is you. And I know that might sound a bit confusing or a bit confronting or a bit insensitive. And if it does feel like that, then I do apologize. But what I have experienced through my own recovery and also through the people that I help with one-on-one -on -one coaching, this is the biggest thing. And also some of the things that I get on my YouTube comments as well. And so the reason you are the biggest thing which is stopping you from recovery is because it's really, really quite simple. Nobody can recover for you. You are the only one that can recover. And I do empathize with what you are going through right now, whether you are confused, whether you are scared, whether you're frustrated, whether you're angry, whether you're just over it, whether you've given up hope, you know, all these things play a part. So let's sort of talk about something a little bit confronting as well. And the fact that the reason you're even in this state is in part because of you as well. And I know you might think something like, well, hey, I didn't choose to have DPDR. You know, I didn't want to be anxious. You know, I had that edible and the edible made me like this. Or one day I just had a panic attack it's out of nowhere. And then, you know, a couple of weeks after the panic attack, it made me go into DPDR. So I know that maybe while there might be some instances and situations that are out of your control, such as how you react to an edible or the after effects of a panic attack. But you do have to take and acknowledge some of the responsibility that led you up to that point. You know, you wouldn't have had a panic attack if your life was completely calm and you were cool and confident with everything that was going on. It's very, very unlikely. And when it usually comes to edibles and things like that, it's not actually the edible that does it, it's the edible that puts you into a state which makes all the anxiety and the stress which is sort of there in the first place and all the worries perhaps that you've been having about your life all come to the forefront. Plus you're, you know, you're stoned or you're high or whatever it is. And that is obviously gonna have a magnifying effect on all of that stuff that you're feeling, which was there anyway. You might be thinking things like, well, this isn't my fault and why me and why has this happened to me and this has just come out of the blue and, and all these other things. Whereas in reality, you've actually got to take a little bit of responsibility for what's happened. And I think that if you do think back to past things that have happened in your life um, and the ways that you actually dealt with it, maybe you could pinpoint if you're truly deep down honest with yourself that maybe I could have handled that differently. Maybe I was putting myself under too much stress. Maybe I was ignoring that problem for too long, thinking that I could just deal with it and I had enough strength to be able to do it. Another reason why you are the biggest thing getting in the way of your recovery right now is because you are literally getting in your own way. And what I mean by that is the whole concept of, you know, I can show you the door, but it's you that's got to walk through it. So this is your recovery. You know, nobody can recover for you. They can help you, they can guide you, they can offer advice, which is what I do when I'm, you know, helping people recover. But ultimately it's up to you to be totally honest with yourself. And it's up to you to put in place some of the new information that you learn. So that's what the whole concept of, you know, I, I can show you the way, but you're the one that's actually gonna have to travel that. I can't travel that journey for you. I've already traveled that journey myself and I'm quite good at helping you navigate that journey so you can, you know, walk through that door with as least sort of friction as possible. And another reason that with people, they are the biggest reason that they don't recover is because like with the door I just mentioned, there's a path, right? And so you've got path A and B. Path A is what you've been doing all the time. 
Path B is doing something different, something more helpful, maybe resourceful, maybe more productive. And you go down path A, you're really good at it. You've done it a million times before. Go down there, go down there, go down there. What do you get to the end of path A? Oh, you get anxiety, you get symptoms. But hey, at least you know the path really well. You go down path B. Oh, you go to path down path B and it's a dead end at the, at the end. Maybe there's lots of obstacles in the way, so it's actually quite tricky. Maybe you've got to go down path B.1 and try that. And that doesn't quite work. Maybe you've got to backtrack back to the beginning and then go down a slightly different variation and all this type of stuff. But at the end of this does lie recovery. And at the end of this does, uh, and even during this path, you know, it, it does give you more hope. It gives you more control. It makes you feel more confident. It gives you more education about what's happening and pretty much nothing but positive things. So that's what happens if you go down path B. But you choose to go down path A. Why? <laughs> Why do you continue to choose going down this path? And I'm here to tell you right now, there is a reason. 100% there is a reason why you're doing that. And until you discover that reason and discover what you're getting out of going down that path so many times, the chances are you probably are going to still keep going down that path. Now, I know that might sound a little bit scary and you're like, oh, well, I'm, um, you know, I've got to, uh, I've had DPDR too long to go down path B or, you know, I've been doing this too many times to go down this path or this path is really easy, even though I know where it leads and I, I don't want to do this one because it looks too scary or I don't know how to do this one. You know, there's lots and lots of reasons um, and dare I say it, I say reasons, that sort of polite way of saying excuses. There's lots and lots of excuses why you shouldn't go down path B. And that's okay. You know, that is okay. And that is completely normal because everybody I coach is at that point. You know, they might have done a little bit of education themselves, a little bit of reading. Maybe they've had a little bit of therapy, but they just can't quite get it yet. And so, you know, that's what coaching is about. It's about sort of getting you going down the path or paths which are going to be able to help you. And what I sort of genuinely mean by all of this too is that I'm not trying to attack you or I'm not trying to say that you're weak or you're wrong or you have to do it this way because this is the right way. All I'm doing is highlighting to you probably some of the things that you are doing which are holding you back. And sort of highlighting to you as well that even though you don't like your situation right now, you do have to take a bit of responsibility for where you are right now. And as soon as you start to do that, then you are going to feel a, a lot better about, all right, yeah, you know what, maybe he's right. Maybe I am a little bit responsible for this. Maybe it is up to me to get out of this. And the really amazing thing about all of this is that once you do realize that you're part of the reason of why this happened, you sort of go on to reason that you are going to be a big part of the reason of why, of how you actually get out of this. And if you do have any questions, then please leave them in a comment down below. I do read all of them and try to get back to as many as I can. And I hope this video has been useful to you. So my friends, until next time, I will see you all in the next video. Bye.